All right, Chiefs Kingdom, you're smart people. You've probably figured it out by now. This is a two-part video series. Why they shouldn't keep him and why they should. This video is about why they should keep Orlando Brown. Pay that man. Touchdown, Kansas City. One of the greatest duos in the history of the National Football League. Patrick Mahomes to Travis Kelsey on a push fade comeback. And the Chiefs have won this incredible divisional playoff game in overtime. All right, guys, like I mentioned in the intro, this video is all about why we should keep Orlando and pay that man. So we're going to get right into it. I'm going to show you some film from the Browns game, same game as that we used in the last video to say why we shouldn't keep Orlando. And here we are. We got... Uh, we have him right back out here, excuse me, by him I mean Miles Garrett, right back out here in a nine technique, way outside the tackle. This is very hard to deal with if you are, uh, if you have less athletic tools as a tackle, you're more of a big brawler like Orlando Brown is. This is the hardest thing to deal with, a nine technique that is also fast and has lots of pass moves, pass rush moves like uh, Miles Garrett does. So let's see what he does here. Let's see how he acts differently than the last video that we showed. You can see right here he gets, bam, immediately into his kick step and gets depth immediately to his kick step. It is still a little bit more horizontal than I expect, but that doesn't matter because if we look here, you can already tell that Orlando's body is in the way and in between Miles Garrett and the quarterback, and that is how you pass block. Miles Garrett sees this, and what we're going to see right now is Miles Garrett says, okay, if I keep coming this way, Orlando is going to turn his hips. He's going to run me around the quarterback. I'm going to end up way back here somewhere. And that's not what Miles Garrett wants. So you're going to see him try an inside move, and that's exactly what he does. He tries to get past Orlando on the inside move. Orlando would have been beaten had he come here, okay? Just because Miles Garrett gets away from him and comes all the way in here, to Joe Tooney does not mean that Orlando Brown was beaten on the inside move. That is not how that works. This is now Joe Tooney's responsibility to pick up, and Joe Tooney does. So that is the offensive line working together, everything working as it's supposed to. We're going to pick another play to look at. There's several plays in here that he does just fine in pass blocking with uh, Miles Garrett out in the nine technique again. Here we are, gets the good pass set. Miles sees the good pass set. He tries to shoulder fake to the outside, but he sees Orlando Brown is in a good position. He also has watched enough film on Orlando Brown to know that I can probably beat him on an inside move. So he comes inside, but guess what? Orlando Brown has kept his post foot. He gets a little narrow here. This is something that all these guys need to work on. Except the interior line, they're really good at keeping their nice wide base. Uh, but he gets a little narrow here, but that's okay. He's going to get back to wide and set up. You see right there, he took a kind of a hit to the chest. Gets rocked back a little bit, but he's getting that wide, uh, wide stance back set. And then he's able to set up and fight. And he, he makes Miles Garrett revert to power moves. Revert to basically what is essentially a bull rush. And he just gets washed into the traffic. And we see that Lucas Niang is actually the guy that ends up not pass blocking as well this time. And Pat has to flush out. And they end up completing this to Demarcus Robinson. We'll let the play play out. That's, that's good pass blocking by Orlando Brown. Um, somebody that is a little more nervous or maybe doesn't have a background in coaching a line. Uh, they may have marked that as a, as a victory for Miles Garrett. I would say that's absolutely not a victory for Miles Garrett. Miles Garrett is one of the best pass rushers in the league. And if you can stalemate him like that, guys, pass blocking is getting your ass kicked real slowly. Um, so that's what happens here. I mean, Orlando Brown kind of gets his ass kicked, but he gets his ass kicked real slow. And it's so slow that it, it doesn't allow Miles Garrett to affect this play. He Orlando just literally ends up washing him out into the traffic, and that gives Pat two options. He could have kept running and gained some yards, or he got this nice little wide open throw to 
uh, Demarcus Robinson. And he probably had, looks like 10 there. So probably had that too. So that's my film I'm gonna show you for this argument. I'm also gonna show you some of the stats that we talked about and kind of turn them back around the other way. So four sacks all year. Um, that sounds like a lot. And if you compare it to some of the other guys, you're gonna say, man, he allows a lot of sacks compared to, oh, let's, uh, let's just say Trent Williams, right? So let's try to get back to Trent Williams here. Uh, well, shoot, darn it. Okay, hold on, give me a second here. I had this all set up. Here we go, Trent Williams. All right, so let's click on him and see how Trent Williams did in the passing game, aside from the PFF grading numbers, because I don't necessarily, as I alluded to earlier, don't necessarily always agree with those, right? So you see, hey, Trent Williams allowed one sack. So amazing, awesome. That's fantastic. But how many pass blocking snaps did he have? 508 pass blocking snaps. 508 is what it says there. It actually says 591 here. So I'm not sure which number is accurate. Uh, we'll go with we'll go with the one that is in his page, which is uh, all of a sudden already forgot that, so I apologize. Let's look on that and get that loaded up here real quick. Ooh, my internet is being funky. I apologize, guys. Okay, 508, right? So 508. If you allow, I kind of tallied up what I did was I looked at sacks, hits, and pressures. I added all those up it turns out to be about 4% of the time that Trent Williams lost on a, on a play. And that's trusting PFF's numbers, which they kind of contradict themselves even right here on the PFF webpage when it says 591 or 508, right? Because that's a significant uh, discrepancy. But we'll just go with the 508 number. It's 4% of the time Trent Williams lost on pass blocking by my, by my math, right? So... And then you go down and you look at 28, you look at Orlando Brown, and he has 916 snaps, nearly double the passing snaps, nearly double the pass protection snaps as Trent Williams. That is a significant amount of number for uh, a significant amount of snaps for you to consider and say, this guy is in pass protection way more than Trent Williams is asked to do. So when you have that, you can expect that you're going to have more losses. Um, but what statistically does it turn out to? What's the percentage, right? So when we, when we get the page to pull up here, you see four sacks. And if we look down here, I did total pressures. And I, some of these pressures, let's be honest, I'm not going to agree with some of those pressures, to be honest. We looked at some of the Browns film. And I guarantee you a couple of those were counted as pressures. And I would personally not count those as pressures. Hits allowed 12, sacks four. If you add all this up, uh, it comes out to like 52, I believe. And if you look at it, it's so he had number one, he had uh six percent is what is how often Orlando Brown lost on passing protection snaps. So you're getting comparable protection from Orlando Brown, it's not quite the quality of Trent Williams, but it's close. And I think the important thing to remember is that Orlando Brown is significantly younger than Trent Williams. Trent Williams is a veteran. He's been around this league forever. He's an older guy. He's counting a lot more on his technique and being that technician veteran uh, than Orlando Brown is. And as Orlando Brown matures as an offensive lineman, you will see him gain some of that technical skill. And he's slimming down. I mentioned this in the uh, last video. They have him listed here as 345. That's because he is trimmed down to 345 this season. 20 pounds of weight loss will be significant for this guy. He's going to move a little better this year. And that is going to be great for his pass protection. And he realized last year, oh my God, I have to pass protect twice as much as I ever had to before. Uh, so you're going to see him produce better this year in the passing game second year in the offense, understanding all the different protections that are, that are out there um, in this system, and you will see him progress better. He's young. 
He is absolutely worth a Trent Williams level contract because of his youth. You're paying for potential. And even if you're not paying for potential, even if you're a guy that says, I don't want to pay for potential, I want to pay for what he does, fine. He's already giving you pretty much what Trent Williams gives you. And that contract that Trent Williams got is already, what is it, two years old? No, it's one year old. It, it happened last offseason. So I think it's I think it's completely reasonable to give him just a bit above Trent Williams, structure it in a way that's team friendly, and pay the man because that contract is going to look more and more team friendly as time goes on. Trent Williams' contract, which we all kind of gasped at and said, ooh, we almost got Trent Williams. We were very close to having him. Um, my problem with getting Trent Williams was his age. Uh, so this is what I like about Orlando Brown. He's a younger guy. We're going to have him for a much longer time. And I'm excited about this. And I think this is absolutely the move that needs to happen. We need to sign him. We need to lock him up long term. He's very capable. He will get better. He's made a Pro Bowl at right tackle. He's made a Pro Bowl at left tackle. And he will make more Pro Bowls at left tackle. I promise you guys. He is very capable. He's got some stuff to clean up. I could do a whole film study on Orlando Brown and show you the stuff he has to clean up and show you the stuff he's really good at. Um, as he becomes more of a technician, as he leans up and starts to make his fitness level fit this offense and less of the run dominant offense of the Baltimore Ravens, you will see him fit in even better. You will also see these PFF scores go up and these PFF scores are not particularly terrible anyway. And like I said, I don't really depend on PFF anyway, guys. So I would say, uh, give it a look, you know, give both videos a look, look at the pluses and minuses. For me, there's much more pluses and minuses here to keep Orlando Brown than there are to move on from him. Because let's be honest, what are we going to get in a trade? I'm not sure. You're not going to get what you gave for him last year. Um, and then you've lost out. It's, you know, perhaps that's a fallacy of sunk cost. <laughs> As a friend of mine likes to say, fallacy of front, uh, sunk cost, right? And if it's time to cut, uh, cut bait and say we lost, then it's that time. But I don't believe it is that time. He's 26 years old. He's uh, great size. He's, he's working on the athleticism. He's working on the technical skills. He's got the strength. And he does particularly well against high-end rushers. And that's why I chose to use Miles Garrett for the couple of plays that we went over. So let me know what you guys think. Hit me up in the comments. I would like to continue this conversation uh, if everybody's interested in it. Up until the time that Orlando, that we do know something, we're 10 days out right now from the deadline. They have to have him signed by the 15th of July. Otherwise, he's going to play on the franchise tag, and we don't want to see that. I think that would get nasty and distracting for the team. But as I said in one of the earlier videos, nothing is probably hearing nothing is probably a good thing. So uh, with that, I'll leave you guys. I hope you like these two new videos. Let me know what you're thinking. Like, share, subscribe. Interact with me in the comments. I'll definitely hit you back. And if you got a cool idea for a video, hit me up. I got the week off from the high school football team, so I got time to make some videos. Let's get into it. Let's have a discussion and let's go cheese. But I'm still fly, I'm still fly, I know. I'm still fly, I'm still fly, let's go. It could all be worse, I could be a hater like you. It could all be to make the man, but that poison's gonna chew you. Say it with your chest now, say it with your chest now